Walker and Scott, the Joy Boys. Time here at WRC, 16 and a half minutes after 3. And for those of you who uh, missed the first hour, we are doing a Worm Turns a little differently today. We're doing it one episode every hour so that we can complete the cycle before we complete this <laughs> cycle. That was not necessary. All right. Well, that's what I told them. <laughs> but they did it anyway. And now, the continuing to the live story as the Worm Turns. The story of life today, the big city hospital, and all brought you by Scoff No More, the miracle plastic product of the space age to spray your little children to protect them from noxious growth and certain weeds indigenous to the metropolitan area. <laughs> you may recall one hour ago when we last met you, we were in the office of the very kind and beloved doctor in Big City General, Dr. Clayton Jackson Durante. Dr. Durante is a throat specialist and had been visited by a top 40 rock jock who had called him just two nights before around midnight with a certain problem. The doctor, as all good doctors do when you call them in the middle of the night, told him to take an aspirin and call back in the morning, if indeed he was able. Well, he was indeed able. And so the young, pearly white, 26-year-old rock jock did indeed call back and make an appointment with the doctor. As our story closed the last hour, you may recall there was a knock on the door. I'm sorry, I forgot. I, it, it's the sorry. knock and not the bell, right? That's all right. All right. You're all right. Try to kill okay. Me again, okay. You... There was a knock at the door. Just, just one, one knock. One knock. Okay. On the door. There was a knock at the door. The door opened. In stepped the young jock, perspiring somewhat, nervously walking back and forth. How do you make the sound of somebody perspiring? <laughs> Pat your forehead. Ah. Yeah. You look silly. Uh -huh. As the young jock speaks to the doctor, he informs them that he has a problem. It occurred, apparently, the day after he took the switchboard operator out to dinner. Well, what have we here? Hmm. The young jock speaks. <coughs> Doc, I... I got, uh, I got this terrible problem, Doc, that I only, only... Uh, what did you have for lunch, Only Junior? a medical man like you, Doctor uh, Durante could possibly help me with. Uh, Doc, it's... Kid, you sound like a tape recorder going at the wrong speed. <laughs> you don't understand, With Doc. a voice like mine, I'd have to be a throat surgeon. I'm I? the I idol of a... Million teeny boppers, Doc, and I do this all-night rock show at this... Top 40 operation, and I think your battery's going bad, Doc, kid. This terrible thing happened after I took the... Switchboard operator out to lunch the other day. Well, <laughs> Well, 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 well. What does the young switchboard operator have to do with the plot? Seems to me there's something else wrong here. What does the plot have to do with the young switchboard operator? You won't want to miss the next hour's thrilling episode as the worm turns when you'll hear Dr. Clayton Durante speak to the young jock and tell him this. Everybody wants to get into the act. The Worm Turns is written for radio. That's as good as any I suppose. He by, used it for years. By Denise and Damon De Valero and produced by Tandaleo T. Thomas. This is indeed a Damon Dell Tandell production and comes to you from Washington. Until the next hour. Ta. Low budget. I think I got a way to make the sound of a guy sweating. Forget it. How oh, very, very cool. Oh, how very cool. That's Susan Christie, and I love onions. Remember that? Bye, Susie. And there she goes. That's all Susan Christie. Lovely girl. She's marvelous. Hey, we have a guy on the phone here, if you can take care of this for me, Michael. We, we have Dean Everett from WAVA in Arlington, Virginia. Dean is the production manager. You hear him on a lot of commercials. Are you there, Dean? Yes, I'm here, ready. Hey, listen, nice of you to call on our uh, swan song. You listening over there? I just got a memo today that yeah. said you were going off the air. That's right. How long has this been going on? Uh, the show. Well, you mean how long has the memo been going around? How long has it been going around? It just got to me. Gee, well, I guess it's been going on here about, uh, we've known it for a couple of weeks. I'll be darned. And, uh, there, you know, it's a little pro program format change. Right, And, uh, right. so a 17-year run, and which is not a bad run in radio. And we're, well, I got it from T.O.P. You got it from T.O.P. <laughs> yes. Anyway. We got it from W.R.C. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got an idea. You, what, what you got? Why don't you come on over here? Let me ask my... Let, let me check something. Willard? Dean? Yeah? Willard's on his way over. I'll be there in about two minutes, okay? okay? Fine. I'll get the, get the hamburgers ready and we'll do a thing. Okay. Okay, now listen. 
for just the right kind of message for any occasion throughout the year, whatever it be, a birthday, wedding anniversary, you want to express warmth and pleasure, send a huge, or see the huge selection of greeting cards. Send them all if you want to. American greeting cards available at Drug Fair. And remember, now every day is discount day at Drug Fair. Yes, now there's a bigger difference at your Drug Fair. So come on in, count your cash savings, and you'll be glad you did. Won't you remember? Don't say drugstore, say Drug Fair. There's a big difference, won't you remember? You shop at a discount store. You're looking for quality. The folks who know have always found it. The DF label's the best around, won't you remember? Don't say drugstore, say drug fair. There's a big difference, won't you remember? Don't say drug store. Walker and Scott, we're the Joy Boys, and that's a little Guy Lombardo. I wish you haven't heard that for a while. Yeah, Walker and Scott <laughs> from NBC in Washington. Mr. Mr. Sherwood, sir. <coughs> Try to get over that car. WRC Washington, the time is 3.30. Prince George's County Council President Winfield Kelly has disputed reports that zoning for a sports complex at Largo will open the entire rural area for commercial development and in parkland elsewhere in the county. Kelly said the zoning is necessary to prevent the possible loss of the sports arena to another area. He said it is not the intention or desire of the council to encourage parkland development other than the sports arena. In northern Virginia, the Prince William County supervisors have rescinded a zoning change for 67 acres in the Bull Run floodplain for location of a mobile home park. The supervisors backed down after a lawsuit was filed challenging the zoning action. Central and western Virginia have been hit by serious flooding that has claimed at least three lives. The city of Richmond is bracing for heavy flooding with the James River expected to spill over its banks from torrential rains. Mayor Thomas Bliley has more on the situation. Current predictions by the Weather Bureau indicate that the city of Richmond will have major flooding Saturday afternoon. Our experiences in the floods associated with Camille and Agnes show that the building of the dikes on the north side of the river would be futile. Our pumping station at 17th Street cannot operate with more than 21 feet of flooding. And any more water than that would simply back up behind the dikes and cause the same kind of problems that we experienced in 1969 and just a few months ago. Richmond Mayor Thomas Bliley said the First Army will send troops in from Fort Lee to help people move out of the flood area. A three-judge federal panel has upheld the constitutionality of the Maryland Movie Censor Board. The board is the last of its type in the nation. The ruling came on a suit filed by two operators of peep shows in Baltimore who contended the censor board is an illegal panel. D.C. medical examiner James Luke says heroin deaths in the city dropped sharply over the past 12 months, but that methadone deaths doubled during the same period. The American Civil Liberties Union has asked the Supreme Court to stop D.C. police officers from arresting people for cursing on the street. The appeal involves a 1969 drug conviction of a man who swore at police when they approached him. Howard Thomas says he'll step down as chairman of the Montgomery County Democratic Party after the November election. Thomas has been active in party affairs for 18 years. The stock market is slightly higher at this hour. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up two and a third points. The forecast, cloudy and rather windy through the afternoon with rain likely. Rain tonight may be heavy at times, low in the 60s. Tomorrow rain likely, but gradually ending during the day, high in the 70s. Chance of rain, 70% this afternoon, 90% tonight, 70% tomorrow. Right now it's 72 degrees, the humidity is 69%. The wind is east-northeast at 17, gusting to 24. David Rush, WRC, NBC News. WRC time, 3.33. Now back to the Joy Boys. Oh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, David. It is 27 minutes before four. The Joy Boys it is. One more time here on WRC. Remember, when, here's one of the songs we used to play so many times when we were on at night from 8 till 11 a few years back. Michelle Lee singing... David Sloan. L. David Sloan, leave me alone. That's Michelle Lee, and the time at WRC now is about 24 and a half minutes in front of uh, 
Four o'clock on the good old Joy Boy show. Yes, indeed. Okay, let me see. We have all sorts of big things. We'll be going to WWPU later on. We'll have, of course, we'll have uh, more of the worm turns. And Tell your friends to join us until 6 o'clock. And once again, let us say we're very, very sorry that we cannot have visitors in the studio today, but they are doing some construction in the building, among other things, and uh, it is not really feasible for us to have guests much as we would like to. Just the fact that you're listening and uh, we're hearing from you, that, that, that's, that's gratifying to us. We really, do, we really do appreciate that, okay? Now, what is as modern as today and yet it is as quaint as yesteryear? No, no, not the Joy Boys with the hippie outfits on, no. We're talking about, we're talking about First Commonwealth Savings and Loan Association in Alexandria. Now, such old-fashioned courtesy just doesn't happen, and you just don't find it in most places today, because we have 104 years of experience behind us, which enables First Commonwealth Savings and Loan to offer the most uh, complete and, and safe financial advice. So you can rest assured your money is safe over there, and your annual 5% dividends will attest to that. Their insured savings in your passbook account at either office 301 South Washington or 503 King Street in Alexandria, Virginia. And remember, you come first with First Commonwealth. And let me just say, that it's been our pleasure to do business for First Commonwealth on the show here for these few months that they've been with us. And nice to represent them. And we thank them for their, their patronage of our show. Okay? Thanks so much. In fact, to all of our sponsors. And we do mean that. Every one of them is a personal friend and they have been wonderful to us. And we thank you. Thank you. And I hope that we uh, are able to do business again real soon. Oh, oh, what show of the Joy Boys memories would be complete without Run, Rabbit, Run by Flanagan and Allen back to the music hall. Each week at this time, the National Broadcasting Company and its independent and pitiful affiliated stations take this opportunity to present, as it were, a study in semantics. You notice he's ad living it. Word preservation. I couldn't find the Did copy, to be copy? perfectly honest with oh, you. I see. I'll tell you why I couldn't find the copy, if you'll listen to me for a why second. Why is that? We have a sponsor on our program tonight. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, that's, that's wonderful, isn't it? First time in 13 years the show's been on the air. Are you ready? Yes. Old Spouse, the real man shaving lotion, make you smell like a husband, brings you... The original amateur hour. I really don't think I want any part of that. <laughs> the WRC Word Study Group entitled The Round Table of Knowledge. And now, from you left really to right... You really are kicking it, you know that? <laughs> I got my new Tom McGann's yeah, on, man. Don't yeah. bug me. From left to right, across uh, the microphone from me, yes. representing the Chicago Institute for the <laughs> Abolishment of Chicago, Mr. Oscar Meyer. Orson Meyer. Orson Meyer. How many years have we been doing this bomb and you don't remember my name? Lost the copy. Orson Meyer, Orson friends. Meyer. And I am available for... After dinner speeches, hold it very reasonable show. rate. Next to him is the very charming and vivacious Miss Anna Nim, formerly the Miss Anna Nim of 1932 <laughs> and founder of the East West North South Word Study Group yes. for Word Preservation. Thank you very much, Miss Nim. Stand up and take a bow. Thank you. Oop! You hit the microphone, Miss Nim. We're using a boom today, please. Yeah. If you don't mind. A boom, huh? And yes, the mankind. This whole show is. That's a bomb. bomb. When will we get to the show? Yeah. Yeah, that's part of the action. <laughs> that was a funny one, there, was it? Knock it off, Jordy. All right. Let's get to the final member of our panel, the oldest man, the senior citizen of the Word Study Group. From Wiesbaden, Germany, Professor Heinrich Van Lyn. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's wonderful to be with you. And... What's that on your arm, Professor? Oh, your you know. armband. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just something. Those were your old days, yeah. Professor. Well, we take it off, we might have some publicity the way it shots. Was Looks moving very west. bad. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, there. All right, are you all ready today for the word, panel Not members? really, no. All because, right, let's do the best yes, we can. We're ready, ready yes. Miss Nim? Yes. Miss Nim? Hmm? Oh. Ah! We got the bell back. Today's word, panel members, is sink. S I N K, sink as in submerge or getting rid of. It is? Mm-hmm. I think it's the uh, part of an old song. Wait a minute. Be recognized, if you will, please. Oh, Mr. Me, Meyer has, hand his, has his hand up. Uh, yes, it's Jimmy Quit Randy. Quit tickling Mr. Meyer, will you, Miss Nim? He's trying to study Sorry this. Sorry about that. Yes, all right. Jimmy Randy's old theme, sink a dink a doo That's ink. ink a dink a doo Ink. Oh. Yes. Let's try it again. Uh, Professor, yes. you had your... Oh, Miss yeah, Meyer? Yeah, no, I got my hand up. <laughs> Can't you tell us apart? Oh, I'm sorry. Really, it's a name <laughs> One of you hasn't shaved. The television <laughs> show does. Think Meyer. along with Mitch. Sink I think along. it was. Think along with Mitch. I'm sorry, and, uh, you've completely twisted this around. When, let me explain. The word again is sink. S-I-N. Obvious to everybody that it's part of the kitchen. The sink. Where the faucets are. Now, what you've brought you everything up dirty dishes. but the kitchen sink. We're not looking for that type of sink, not the receptacle. I know what it is. All right, Mr. What Meyer. What the show does. What? Sink. Sinks. 
I think you're oh, looking for the sake. word uh, smell bad there. Thank you for being oh. with us anyway, panel member. Well, I could have said that. And join us again. <laughs> and listen, next week, Charlie, You're going to file you... your personal opinion. Would you do Bring it by mail? Bring your script. Well, it's much better than you. Thanks to Mr. Meyer. You're say good night. Good night. Thank you, Miss Nim. Thank you. And thank you, Professor. Ah, uh, yes. Have good you night. got one of those armbands? <laughs> no, I, I can dig one out. I yes, used to have one when I was a kid. Join us again next week, won't you? Hey, that's one of those humorous bits that helped uh, bomb the show out over the last few years. We want to thank you. Boy, know, I can see why. I wasn't here then. All of the, But uh, the they, you got a head start on it, didn't you? Archie. Hi, Archie. Archie. Jeez. Hey, we you know, there was funny guys in a, yeah. in a radio back in the 40s. Uh, Duffy's Tavern, what do you eat me to eat, all that yeah. stuff. And it was uh, Jack Benny and Fred Allen and... And uh, Stoop Nagel and Bud and all them guys, but geez. Either. Arch, if Thank you just you. stifle yourself, we'll play an old Glenn Miller well, record, okay? Oh, gee, don't do that. I can't believe that. I got a fellow over there. It's is... the sheriff. Sure. Program director. Hey, did you find any more strawberries? We tried to find the strawberries for you. And... I, I've given up on the strawberries. <laughs> I've decided. Yeah? Those, <laughs> those strawberries are probably gone and digested by now. Well, I'm glad you've said Somebody you put just... one over on me, but yeah. not no more. Because no after the day, it's right. all over. It's curtains, right? It's curtains for you, yeah. yeah. So remember that, kid. And someday when I get some more strawberries, right. you won't be here right. to steal them. Well, who are you going to have to bug you I'll eat the whole pint week? myself. Huh? Who are you going to have to bug you next week? Won't be anybody here? My wife, probably. Really. I don't oh, really? Know. All right, kid. So long and do a commercial. Oh, okay. Even a trade deal on that. We're going to do a commercial for our friends Elgin Kirby. How long have we been doing business with Elgin? Too long. I'm Mrs. Kirby. That's an, uh, Mickey, please. That's not nice. But we have been doing business for Elgin for a long time. And doggone it, I hope that you've taken our advice, or will, certainly now, because after today, we won't be able to tell you until we, you know, go somewhere else. And I, I had a 38 Nash, Mr. Walker. I'm a sports 38 car. Nash. Yes, I can tell you are with the helmet I and everything. I traded. I debated for weeks what I'd do with that car. A couple of dealers that I took it to suggested what I could What do you should with do with the car, the car. yes. yes mm -hmm. but I didn't. And I took it over to Kirby, and they made the impossible deal. The impossible? Uh, to me, the impossible deal. That's right. They, mm -hmm. what, what was the impossible deal? Well, they got me out of the car, first of all. That was That was problem. pretty impossible right there. They made a wonderful trade deal there. Twenty-nine ninety-five is all they charged me. Bought an Edsel. They had a used oh. Edsel on the lot next to one of their monocles. Monocles. Old Monaco. Yeah. Monaco. Whatever happened to them, boy, when they pulled out... Whatever happened to Garris? You started falling apart, Garris. <laughs> Garris brought his own business in for the first two shows, then he sucked it to him, boy. <laughs> We took our men from the mountains, from the backwoods, from the plains, from Kentucky, Virginia, Maine? No, not Maine. We had them under orders, guerrilla fighting orders, and what we lacked in number, we made up in speed and brain. Both Rebs and Yankee strangers, they called us Nosby's Rangers. Both north and south, they knew our fame. Yellow Ghost is what they call me. Chicken Little is my name. This is the story of the Yellow Ghost, the great Confederate major of the Civil War history, who sneaked in and out with his horses and men, a handful, just a group, but who made legendary history for the South and a credit to their great country. As our story opens now, Major Nosby has just finished raiding a party of people somewhere off the southern coast of Maryland, not too far from the district line. This was one of those secret southern raids that had brought about so much terror and tyranny during the early days of the war between the states. As we join the Major and his faithful sergeant, Sergeant Pine, we find them inside or outside or around the ladies' chamber. Shall we join them? Sergeant, we, uh, above all, need new horses. Our animals are foot-weary and tired. So am I, Major. Foot-weary and tired. Sergeant, I hope that you were able to capture me some horses on that last raid. Major Nosby. Yes, Sergeant. I think I've come up with a unique plan that's unique in military history. How's that? I've just found 16 horses, Major, and they're all in a circle. 16 horses just standing there? Just standing there watching the girls go by. That's right, Major. Where are they, Sergeant? They're just across this thicket. Show me. Let's go. All right. Walk easy, Major. There's Yankees around here. There they are, Major. Sneak up careful. Wonderful looking animals, aren't they? Beautiful. I got them myself. All Yankee horses. Let me just hop up here and see if I can take a ride on one of them. Uh, I'll get next to you. All right. <laughs> Miles. What's the matter, Major? Sergeant. 
Well, these aren't ordinary horses. They're going around in a circle, ain't they? Yes, they're going up and down and around in a circle. And Let's see, what does that sign say out there? Glen Echo. What does that mean? I don't know. I think, Miles, you made a terrible mistake. Major, Robert E. Lee ain't gonna like that. These are the Pepco people. <laughs> Give them a bump ad for their place out there. Well, that's as long as we're here, let's reach for the brass ring. What do you okay. say, Sergeant? Ah, oh. Sorry, Major, you fell off your horse. Let me... Oh, water boy, script writer, cue card. Both north and south. Wait a minute. You've just heard another exciting episode of Major Nosby, the great Confederate major who fought his way through horseback and thicket and thin to the early days of the Confederate States' battle for freedom and justice. Both north and south. They wait, a minute, wait a minute. Major Nosby is played by Hiram Fink. Both north and south, they knew our... Well, I forgot the line now. Chicken Little is my name. Count, oh, my, 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 my. Okay, that was the sound of uh, Dearborn, Michigan, and it was done by Marty Cooper in the orchestra. Gentlemen, we have a call on our uh, on our phone line here. Could you open the line, Jeff, and let's see who we have. Hello, this is the Joy Boy Show. Who am I talking to, please? Senator George McGovern, Eddie. D Senator, bless you for calling. Uh, are you a Joy Boys fan? I certainly am, and even though I am on campaign this afternoon, our staff wanted to call to say how terribly affected we are by this obvious mismanagement decision. Thank you, Senator. I, I don't know how... That is really one of the most touching things that's happened this afternoon. That's rather sickening, isn't it? Yes. Not only the decision, but what I just said. Yes, it certainly sickening. is. <laughs> yes. Is there anybody over there with you, Senator? Are you alone now, or...? Uh, let me look here. Yeah. I'm alone, yes. Oh, you are alone? Yes. Does that indicate anything to you, or do you think that... Uh... No, I I'm sorry. They, as they say in the circles, the, the political circles, the writing is on the wall. Yes, uh, if you've been around our men's room, you've seen that before. Like you say, your writing's on your wall. Yeah. <laughs> That's how right. are you, Eddie? This got to be Johnny Holiday, right? How are you? Johnny, well, uh, how, how can you be when you're laying off? You well, I, I, I don't know how, uh, how, how you fellas feel about, uh, I know how you feel about uh, this being your last day, but I thought that maybe I would uh, maybe check in with you for a second here. Sure, I'm glad you called. If you guys are available uh, next week, uh, I, I didn't check with our powers that be over at our station, mm. WWDC, but we'd love to have you come over and maybe... John, <laughs> Willard's on his way now. <laughs> I'll, I'll be right behind. Do you mean that? Sure. Listen, uh, six o'clock or so, come on over and... Uh, and maybe spend uh, the whole morning with me, and, and if you can join us maybe every day next week, we'd love to Gosh, have Gosh, we'd like to. Wouldn't we, Willard, huh? Willard's gone, that's right. Willard's can gone. I Can I leave a call? Can you wake me up on the morning? <laughs> we, I, I tell you, I'm going on a new shift next week, uh, Eddie. We're going to start at 3 o'clock. Oh. 3 until 10. Three oh, until 10, uh, yeah. great. I'll, I'll see. Wait a minute, John. Somebody's at the door. Hold on a minute. I came back, John. That's too early. <laughs> he says it's too early. No, we'd love to do it. Thank you, really. You don't, you don't think the boss will mind? I mean, uh, I, I don't think Gibby so. and Bill Sanders and all the gang, they won't mind? No, I, tell you, I got a note from Bill and, and from Gloria Gibson today, and, and the note said, uh, according to the latest ratings, uh, since you can't beat Frank and Jack, maybe three of you can. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, Johnny. Johnny, Sanders still thinks that you're another one of Jackson Weaver's voices, so let's not break the image, all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, if we come over... Um, We'll we'll do it. Uh, we'll have you'll have you'll supply the coffee and uh, we'll get to do a little exercise with Billy Bicep. So. I tell you, we'll, we'll have the coffee there yeah. and uh, just make sure that that, that all, all of your cats comes over with us. Oh, we'll bring them. Yes, and I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun because you you fellows have got uh, a tremendous following. I think that your station's going to realize that as soon as this day is over. How about what the trash can? Well, it's thank you very much. Oh yes, Willard wants to know if we could bring our trash can. Your trash can? Our trash can's where we keep all of our little sound effects goodies. So. Oh, certainly, yes. Bells yeah. and. That's one, and our doorbell, and a few other little goodies like now, that. Now, you know where we're located, don't you? Uh, yeah. yes, you're over on, uh, near Sears on, uh, Wisconsin. Oh, no, that's another one. No, no, <laughs> we're, we're just down from the dog town and the recycling center. Oh, yes. Oh, I know the place, yes. I've been over there, yes. That's where Knight makes his donuts, right? Yeah. The recycling center. <laughs> and, and, there's a lot of dogs uh, around, so you'll uh, recognize the station. Oh. 
Yeah. Okay, kid. Now, you're, you're sure that you're sure your station won't mind? No. no. Uh, no. I don't think they can hey, really John, mind. John, who'll park our car for us over yeah. there? Can, can, uh, our, can our driver come in with us? Oh, certainly, certainly. Oh, good, yes. good. Oh, yes, all right. What we'll do, maybe, if you don't mind, we'll mention the fact to our WWDC listeners that uh, uh, the next couple of days you'll be joining us uh, Monday, Certainly. Friday, next week. Oh, yes. We'll, and, uh, we, I, John, I can't tell you what a generous gesture that is on your part, taking two young waifs who are uh, out of out in the cold, as it were, and taking us. You do have heat in the place, don't no, you? No, we have a cold studio. You'll be right at home. Oh, okay. <laughs> John? John, John, here the studio's not cold. The shows aren't so hot. <laughs> Listen, we'll see you. We'll see you Monday morning. All right, I'll look for you at six o'clock Monday. All right, okay, Eddie. John, we love you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yes, sir. There you go. That's that's the sound of Fats Waller. We used to play a Fats Waller record every night there, or every Friday night back in the old days. Well, just about time of the uh, time of the year when families go leaf looking. But if you can't get away to the mountains to see the leaves, then see Citizens Bank of Maryland and take a tour of their banks. That's go bank looking. Citizens is the place. It's really a beautiful eye opener to take a tour around the 38 offices. A wonderful sight. 38 banks. Citizens spread all around Prince George's, Montgomery, Anne Arundel, and Charles counties just to serve you better. That's the whole idea about citizens, to make it just as simple and as pleasing as possible for you to enjoy the full service Citizens has to offer. Now, that's the whole story. Citizens Bank and Trust Company of Maryland, the bank that serves you daytime, nighttime, Saturday, too, members of the FDIC. Daytime, nighttime, Saturday, too, we open our doors. Citizens Bank. Continuing Twitter Live story, as the worm turns, the story of Lie High. <laughs> Lie High today in a big city hospital. Right? Nasty hack there. And all brought you by Scuff No More, the miracle plastic product of the space age that protects your little children from certain noxious growth and weeds indigenous to the area. Scuff No More. It's early afternoon at Big City General Hospital, and we are in the office once again of the kindly old doctor, Dr. Clayton Jackson Durante. Dr. Durante is ink a his due, as you may gather in the background. The good doctor is a throat specialist and also a leg man, I understand, from some of the younger nurses. That's right, Jim. But we won't discuss that no, here. We won't discuss that. The good doctor was awakened early this morning by a telephone call. Need a new battery on that one, apparently. <laughs> a telephone call from a young rock jock from the station WHAME Whammy Radio. The all-night man apparently had some problem. He rushed into the office this morning and spoke to the doctor, and it was discovered that he had taken out the switchboard operator the night before. Editor's note, if WHAME had FM, then it would be a double whammy. Go ahead. Uh, uh, ride on. <laughs> As our story opens again today, we find the young jock, Pearly White, speaking with the doctor about his <coughs> throat problem. All right, Junior, you come to the right man. With a voice like mine, I'm a natural throat doctor. But, what? Doctor, you got to understand that being a rock jock, it's important to me that I keep a very... Uh, de oh, that goes again. Doctor, it goes Wait a again. Minute. Wait a minute. You see, every time I try to say survey so... Number seven this week, uh... Something's been happening. To my voice lately, I... I don't know. Can you help? Doc, I hate to tell you something, kid, but you got a real problem with your throat. But, Doctor, you... You got... You give me some advice. Get out of the business. What have we here? What is wrong with the young rock jock's throat? Hmm? You won't want to miss the final Thank the Lord concluding episode at 5.15 when you'll hear the young rock jock pleading to the doctor, Doctor, my entire career is at stake. I've got to do something. I had the same problem with Bobby Breen. The Worm Turns is written for radio by Denise and Damon De Valero and produced by Tondaleo T. Thomas. This is a Damon Del Tandel production and comes to you from Washington. Until the next hour, talk, talk. Laugh tonight with Mac McGarry on the NBC Radio Network. <laughs> WRC, Washington, 430. 
Legislation raising the pay of D.C. teachers and authorizing a public takeover of the area bus lines probably won't receive House action until after the November election. The House leadership today removed the bills from next week's calendar because of debate on revenue sharing. This is David Rush. I'll be back in a moment. Paging Francis Burke, the ace of trades, wants to see you on the double. What kept you? Well, you see, sir, your fabulous trades and extra special closeout savings on 72 Ford. Speak sir. up, Burke. Well, sir, it's making Harriman a hero to hundreds of people, and, and they're packing the show. Well, Burke, oh, what are you doing about it? Oh, we've got them all pinned down, sir. You mean? Yes, sir, pinned Harriman hero buttons on them. And? Sold them brand new 72 Fords at the lowest prices of the year. Ah, good boy, Burke. Keep up the good deals. Yes, sir. I want to make a hero out of every hard bargain driver in this town. Yes, sir. So don't lose a single deal because of price. No, sir. And Harriman Hero buttons for everybody, Burke. Yes, sir. And Burke. Yes, sir. You're unbuttoned. Whoops. Zip right over to Dick Harriman Ford for fabulous Ace of Trade savings on Leesburg Pike Route 7 opposite Tyson's Corner Shopping Center. Beltway exits 10W or 11S in Virginia. Let Harriman Ford pin a hero button on you. Floodwaters are sweeping through central and western Virginia for the second time in four months and so far have claimed at least three lives. Some major roadways have been cut off. Interstate 95 between Richmond and Washington is threatened. The city of Richmond is bracing for a flood crest of 28 feet on the James River tomorrow with predictions of the water being 19 feet above flood level. National Guard and Army troops have moved into the Richmond area to help people get out of low-lying regions. Prince George's County officials say a zoning action to allow the sports complex at Largo will not open commercial development in parkland elsewhere in the county. Council President Winfield Kelly, seeking to gain citizen support for the move, talked of financial benefits from the sports arena. The estimated $2 million in annual tax revenue that the sports arena will generate corresponds to six cents on the county's property tax rate. It will be a beneficial facility for the county and does not, as some contend, represent an illogical or improper use of the Largo property. For these reasons, I believe that a vast majority of the county's taxpayers will support us in our strong commitment to see the sports arena become a reality in the fall of 1973. Kelly said the zoning change is necessary to prevent the loss of the sports arena to another area outside Prince George's County. Montgomery County Executive James Gleason says the county may not fight to save the tenant landlord bill. A circuit judge has nullified the enforcement powers of the new law. D.C. School Superintendent Hugh Scott says he wants the school board to decide well ahead of time whether it intends to retain him. Scott wants a decision by November 1st, although his present contract runs well into next year. He says the time will be needed to give his successor an opportunity to get organized if the school board decides not to retain him. The deadline for registering to vote in the district is midnight, and the D.C. Elections Board's central office will be open until that time in the district building. The stock market closed higher in moderate trading. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up more than four points. The forecast, cloudy and rather windy through the afternoon with rain likely. Rain tonight may be heavy at times, low in the middle 60s. Tomorrow rain likely, but gradually ending during the day, high in the 70s. Chance of rain, 70% this afternoon, 90% tonight, 70% tomorrow. Winds northeast, 10 to 20 miles an hour. Right now, it's 69 degrees in Washington. The humidity is 81%. The wind is east-northeast at 14. David Rush, WRC, NBC News. WRC time, 434. Now back to Scott and Walker. How can you make coffee like they do in fine restaurants? For 60 years, Wilkins has been the great coffee name in the Washington area. In your own home, enjoy the same rich goodness that all great chefs demand. Make friends with Wilkins Coffee and do yourself a flavor. Oh, I love that Wilkins Coffee, don't you? It's great. what we always had in the studio. And I must say at this oh, time, boy. that's what I say. And I want to say that Will Hagee makes the best cup of coffee this side of uh, Chock Full of Nuts or something. Well, that's right here for Will. Well, he... yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Gonna miss that coffee, Will. 
You're going to miss it, too, Will, because I'm taking a coffee bar with me. <laughs> okay. We're going to do a little commercial cluster, and then we'll be right back. Now, we're going to have a little, uh, little thing from the WRC News Department right here, all right? Oh, I'd like to run my fingers through your hair. Now, leave him alone. Let him do a story here, all right? This is Don Doak, WRC Scope. During this scope series, we have examined the problem of building subway facilities in the neighborhoods of the District of Columbia. Until now, construction has been confined to the commercial sections of the city. But as construction moves through the neighborhoods on its way to the suburbs, above-ground facilities for the stations, such as parking lots, bus turnarounds, and cooling and ventilating systems, find themselves in conflict with the neighborhood zoning laws. Metro authorities want a blanket change in the laws to facilitate construction of the necessary facilities. Several citizens' groups want hearings held on the exact placement of these facilities on a station-by-station -station basis in order to protect their homes. Such hearings would fall to the city's Zoning Board of Adjustment, a body which already faces a heavy backlog of zoning cases. Metro officials feel sufficient hearings have been held and that further hearings would only result in costly delays. The D.C. Zoning Commission, with the advice of the Planning Commission, will make the decision. The timetable for construction of the 98-mile Washington area subway system may be at stake. This is Don Doak, WRC Scope.